It wasn't until the summer of 1995 that I grew homesick for the Grove Playhouse and the privilege of working once again with my mentor and friend, Martin Garish. When I heard the news that he would be directing William Shakespeare's Hamlet by the lake, I couldn't refuse auditioning. I had been away much too long and needed to drink in the theatrical flavor Martin brings to his productions. Unbeknownst to me, this particular audition would forever change my life. I recall it was a hot sunny day and I felt quite pleased with my audition and just as I was preparing to depart and in the process of giving Martin a hug goodbye, I heard him softly whisper in my ear, come back tomorrow. I have something I want to ask you. Understandably perplexed. I returned at home, juggling all the possibilities it could be. I don't think I got much sleep that night, contemplating what he would eventually ask me. Upon my return the following day, he informed me I was cast as the gravedigger, and in regards to the more important matter, he wanted to know if I could stop over at his house that evening to discuss it. I was thankful to be in another Martin Garris production, but now I was even more perplexed than the day before. I remember traveling home with a tight knot in my stomach, struggling to unravel the mystery of the soon-to-be question. Finally, I made it over to Martin's house. This is a part of the story that most people have never heard. I was invited into his quaint home by William Farnham, who also lived there. Elaine had died a couple of years back, leaving Martin and Bill to run things. What was to become an ongoing ritual whenever I visited, I sat at a small dining room table. A plate of donuts was on the center table and a cup of black coffee was offered to me, which I gladly accepted. Soon, Martin appeared, taking his seat directly across from me. What kept running through my mind was, can you believe this? You're actually sitting across the table from Martin Garish, in his home, and he wants to ask you a question. There was a somber feeling in the room and a quiet confidence as he began to speak. I guess you've heard they're going to close the Grove Playhouse. Unaware of this new development, having been away for more than a year, I was quite surprised. He continued, saying, Apparently the fire marshal declared the space unfit in transgression of the fire ordinance. Our sprinkler system doesn't meet their safety standards, so they shut us down. I was completely baffled and saddened by this turn of events. He quickly added, The board of the directors are wanting to vote on liquidating the theater company, but I have some other thoughts about it. The thoughts that were rapidly running through my mind, seeking an answer to where this was all heading, didn't prepare me for what I was about to hear next. I've asked you here to offer a proposal. Would you be willing to take over control of Octed One Productions? The top of my head felt as if it was coming unscrewed with my brain leaping and screaming around the room in disbelief in what my ears had just heard. Martin Garish, the renowned local theater giant whom so many talent actors and artists of San Diego theater revered with the highest of respect, just asked me to take over his prize theater company. 
I was waiting for someone to step into the room and say, Ah, just kidding! As I looked into his eyes, his expression didn't change. Weakly, and with a goony expression, I asked, Why me? You're the one best suited for the job. I repeated more passionately, but there's, there's Donald Pugh, uh, Trinip Kaplan, uh, or Catherine Faulkner. What are they to think about me? I'm definitely no Martin Garish. I chose you because you know a little about everything, from acting, directing, designing, and writing. You're the best qualified for the job and don't worry about what the others think about you. In hearing that, I wasn't immediately confronted, for I knew it would be terribly difficult for me to convince the others on the board of my qualifications. In fact, there was no little chance in hell of my convincing them of anything. My few years working around the Grove Playhouse was spent acting and assisting Martin and Bill with set building along with other household duties. I in no means was regarded as a future prodigy of Martin Garrish. If a successor were to be chosen other than Bill Forna, in most people's minds, it would have been Donald Pugh. Don is a very talented actor and director who first was introduced to Martin when attending the Grossmont College Drama Department, where Martin was the head instructor for over 20 years. He followed Garish into Octet One Productions and was also instrumental as one of the key performers and directors at the Grove Playhouse. Compared to Pew and the others, I was strictly considered as an artistic lightweight. With a completely sober response, I offered, Do I have a little time to consider this? Martin smiled, saying, We have time. If you choose to do this, we'll need to acquire another theater venue. Let me know your answer and we'll go on from there. As I stood to leave, I couldn't get over the surrealism. In this brief yet reality-flipping moment, my entire overlook on my future shifted. A man whom I greatly admired had just bestowed a confidence in me that no other individual in my life had ever given. Upon my return, home, I realized I was facing the most important creative decision in my life. I knew fully well if I agreed to his proposal, it would completely consume me and place me inside a fishbowl of harsh criticism from my peers. On the other hand, I realized my happiest moments were when I am totally submerged within a production. If I accepted his offer, I'd then be constantly surrounded by a roulette wheel full of never-ending productions. With that simple logic, I knew this was the direction for me. I was now 44 years old, and it seemed timely that I should undertake such a challenging creative endeavor. So after another dining room conversation with donuts and coffee, I mustered up the courage simply saying, yes. Little did I know what ramifications would follow uttering such a minuscule word of the English language.